Hello and welcome to the Character Select Podcast. My name is Trim. I am your host for tonight's episode. As per usual, we have a fantastic series of guests. I'm going to go straight into the guest introductions because they're, they're fantastic. So the first one, of course, is the creator of the Ninjota team and one of, the, I think it's the Bradford community, Belong and ELF Caster. But this is his first debut on the Character Select Podcast. It's, it's our own very eternal dragon he's, he's a lovely guy you can see his video here um stuff he's been involved in helping out red bull it's fantastic uh elf member who's very very use- <laughs> very very dapper according to this video as well that i've been looking at <laughs> you, you do need to see this video and of course secondly of course we have the man behind the the warriors reborn event that happened last weekend responsible for tons of fighting game tournaments and events it is going to be icarus uh, he's great help in the in the community across all fighting games uh, we, i believe mainly we're going to be talking about soul Calibur and tekken tonight but he's been great in that area he's been a lovely guy i've been talking to him just before uh he's fantastic and extremely helpful and finally we have as our first guest uh third guest scallywag uh pop youtuber creates very great introductory videos and insights from both Tekken and Soul Calibur, long-time Soul Calibur player. Uh, and he's recently released a nice beginner's introduction to Soul Calibur. So do go check that out. Uh, and hopefully you guys can learn quite a bit from him. And I think that's going to be everyone. How are you guys doing today? Thank you. Right. How's it about yourself? Doing great, yeah. Doing great. So obviously you guys are all new to the show uh you guys probably watched parts of previous episodes um we're gonna start off with a little bit of something lighthearted. so we're gonna talk about the tekken world tour uh there was the berlin i think it was the last european event mm. which will have set in place i think quite a number of people's positions on the world uh the leaderboards whether or not they're going to be making it in uh or not so uh did you guys have a chance to watch that just out of curiosity what were your opinions on that event uh, I, I'll go first in that, um, if you don't mind. Like, I I went to Berlin Tech last, last year and I loved the event. The people running that are really, really great tournament organizers. So I always knew the event was going to be a good one. Um, I've, o- I've only really managed to watch a few of the matches from the top eight so far. But um, I was kind of listening along to a lot of the UK boys' performances during our own tournament. Um, really proud of guys like Rukang, like just some re- really good placements there for our own guys and of course congratulations to super akuma um qualifying for the tekken world tour finals now i think with that tournament i think he had to actually win the whole tournament to qualify yeah and he did it <laughs> <laughs> i think he absolutely ha- i think it was one of those ones if he came second he he, he had to go to canada still to have a chance yeah he'd, he'd been running that gofundme right in order to um make it over there mm. and get that chance I think we saw a couple of uh, the UK guys over there. I think uh, some of the District G guys, uh, I think it was Rukang, Phantom, uh, and Asim, Asim I think, oh. were there. I think there was, some, there was a few couple of amazing matches, I think, between Rukang and, was it DPV? D- yeah, yeah D- the other Bob player. Yeah, it was, I think there was a mirror match. And I think DPP actually ended up beating uh, Rukang in that. It was a brilliant match, but <laughs> it's one of those matches... He- DBP always seems to go all out at Berlin Tekken Clash. If I remember correctly, last year he came second place there as well, and he came third this year. So it seems it seems to be his key tournament. Yeah, I think I think it's brilliant to see. Uh, the thing is, it was a challenger. I think it was a challenger event, not a Masters, if I'm correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. you're right. Yeah, uh, with, who's who's going to the World Finals then? I'm, I'm trying to, but they haven't released any details about tickets, so I'm kind of apprehensive about. Booking anything. I'm in the exact same position. I'm just looking at, at I'm tracking <laughs> flight prices every day. Thinking I've, do I book it now? Or do I wait? Exactly. I bought my flight, um, I booked my apartment with a few of the Manchester guys and we're just checking every day. We're just F5 in that second world tour page. Oh no. 
finally released those tickets. I don't want it to be a case where it's like, all right, here's a the ticket, there's 100, and then, you know, you're asleep and they've announced them, and then, oh, there's no tickets, but I've reserved things and, and I bought flights and tickets. So I'm trying to go because it's kind of my birthday weekend as well, so it'd be a good opportunity oh, yeah. to go to the finals. But, yeah, I'm kind of holding off a little bit. Yeah, I've booked the days off at work. But that's it. <laughs> but now that's the only commitment I put in. <laughs> so I've got, I've got, I've managed to go. Yeah, okay. I'm not around this weekend, no matter what. I can kind of relax now and only and just book it if I see it. Yeah, so, I don't blame you. Uh, but anyway, we we Tech and World Tour was brilliant. But what we're more interested about is the week the Manchester event on last weekend. So we had obviously you guys NBA Warriors Reborn. Uh, multiple games, multiple tournaments, multiple really amazing matches. I think some of the finals in Tekken, I, I managed to watch a couple of those rounds with really high level Tekken play coming out. Uh, from like a tournament organizer, uh, what was the atmosphere like for you? What was the sort of point of view here, Chris? Uh, it, was, it was like everything I could have hoped for and more, to be honest. This is like the first major tournament I'd uh, had a hand in organizing. Um, and I was I was I was really worried. I was almost losing sleep in the days coming up to it, thinking, "What is this going to be like? Is it is it just going to be bad? Are people going to be cramped in the venue? Is it is it going to be hype?" Mm-hmm. Um, and then like I just, we just got into it. We just started running the tournaments, and before we knew it, people were popping off. There was emotion everywhere. Everyone was having a good time, and that was just like it was amazing to see. It was like cathartic almost. Like all this work we put into it is um is paid off. So. The, the atmosphere was awesome. The Soul Calibur guys were all great. It's, it's, some of the Tekken matches were getting intense. Um, <laughs> I, I got to give a shout out to E Minor and Saijin for their set. It was uh, off stream, but uh, everyone there who was playing Tekken at the time was ended up crowding around, and that was just it was a hell of an atmosphere. Yeah. Also, Dragon for you, what was what was it like from? A, I think you were there more as a player. Hmm. So it was the worst event I've actually ever been to, and I just now I'm joking. joking. Like, you've already seen my okay, tweet. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was you know completely honest. It was a great event. Um, I've been to quite a few tournaments um, now, mostly around the London area, but you know I've been to Birmingham. It's the first time going to Manchester, so that was a, a first. And I like the fact that, like I said, the, the staff are all friendly and visible. So anything you could see them you need to ask them questions about you know where's my pool where's my bracket they were on point with the disconnected controllers it definitely felt like a very well-run professional event it was on time you know something running on time is just like gold dust in the fgc and that's <laughs> having it on time where i was anticipating and i was saying my match is going to start at four but then it came to three and the match was starting. I was like, oh, so it's on time. And it was like a nice, you know, surprise. And it was, it wasn't too crowded. I can't emphasize how important where, yeah, I know everyone wants to get the most amount of attendees and I understand that. But when it was too crowded at some other events I've gone to, it was really not a good experience. And when I got knocked out of the tournament, I was like, yeah, I'm glad to be knocked out. I'm going home. But at this event, uh, Royals were born. I was like, oh man, I can't stay for the whole event because I have to catch a train back home. So from a play perspective, just mingling around with the community, it's great. You know, all the, the scenes and communities coming together. I just can't say how, how much fun it was, you know, from the top eights from the games. Soul Calibur having its sort of first major tournament only two days since release. It was kind of like you've spoken to these guys online and seen names and then you get to meet each other in person. So, you know, I, I really like the the event in Manchester. And yeah, well done for, you know, yourself and the team here, Chris, you know big props for everyone how it ran you know in my experience it was great okay. thanks man thanks uh, really top, appreciate I, uh, yeah go for, go for it <laughs> i i watched it <laughs> <laughs> and um sorry it was a really it was a really good tournament i think especially what people won't realize because soul caliber 6 is new that hasn't won, been one in a long time um Obviously, a lot of the names that are in this tournament are going to be kind of unknown, and so uh, you know, obviously, you watch the Tekken, uh, the Tekken top eight, which was amazing. Um, all of the like uh, the comebacks from uh, Full God and everything were amazing. But uh, for Soul Calibur, you, you literally—I don't think anyone or very very few people realized how stacked was. Uh, you literally, basically, uh, so I had a prediction for the top five. Um, but that you know they're they're like arguably the top five players in the UK. Mm. 
for Soul Calibur, you know, based upon, obviously the game's new, based upon, uh, you know, Soul Calibur 5, um, 6, the people who have been loyal to that game obviously have some kind of advantage and they would have been considered the very top guys. So that tournament was incredible as well. Um, Lee. I really enjoyed the tournament. I thought both of the uh, both of the Soul Calibur and Tekken top eights were amazing, and that's what I watched anyway. So, yeah, I, I got to give props to Soul Calibur community because um, I, I didn't know a whole lot about Soul Calibur um, before six came out. Uh, I'm fairly new to the FGC in terms of these sort of things, so Soul Calibur five was before my time. So I was I was tasked with seeding this tournament. Um, and so mm -hmm. I made sure to get the brackets out there a bit early so I could get feedback on all of this. And the, fir the first guys to respond were the Soul Calibur community. And I actually got an email from a World Brand Star and it was like, mm -hmm. I'm going to help you out with the seeding for this tournament. Because looking at the seeding, it's clear to me that you don't know some of these players. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I, I should say, I mean, I was actually sort of part of conversations just in Discord servers about the, uh, the seeding. And yeah. uh, everyone was like incredibly happy with... The response you know the responsiveness of the team and the fact that all of the uh the seeding was kind of make it uh you know more appropriate and that's why i wanted People to get out there early so that. i could i could get feedback on that sort of thing um because i i could try my best but when you're seeding this many players in a tournament you're gonna make mistakes so you may as well just be open to people coming in and telling you where you can improve those things so the so Galber community were like straight on that and they were doing it because they wanted the best tournament for everyone there so i really i really appreciate that help yeah it is a brand new game came out i think literally on the friday on the, on the friday uh, yeah what have, what have you guys views on the game for now like uh, have you how much time have you had to put into it have you guys been playing uh, have you done story mode like i have as a beginner person just sat there doing character creation for about the first five hours <laughs> um i'll go first in this so uh i've played it I didn't get any early, early copies or any release. I just played the beta, so I had to just play it from there. I loved the game as soon as I touched it. Oh, sorry, saying that Versus Fighting was there. And then playing it since release and playing it in the tournament, um, Where's Reborn, it definitely feels like it's Soul Calibur's time now, where I've played all the Soul Calibur's before, and Soul Blade and, and whatever, and I was getting, trying to get into the scene with Soul Calibur Five. But then that game came along, and it was like, okay, my, my main's not in the game. The game's changed drastically. And as you mentioned, Scullywag, the dedicated players and the uh, the top players who, who placed kind of like the, 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 the four gods of the game currently, you know, they stuck with it. They were in the scene. And then seeing how it's evolved into six, it feels like this is its Tekken 7 moment where it's got the game that it always deserved. Because Soul Calibur had... You know, it had the graphics, you know, even if you go back in history and you've seen when it was coming at the time. So Calibur coming out, you know, on previous generations and had the guests. It always had that really good casual appeal as well as the competitive side as much as it was back in the day. As it went on, there were still issues competitive-wise, but casual content, it was undeniable how much the casuals loved it, which also had the series, you know, it also benefit from that. So it feels like six... While it does have things missing, as you said, as well, Scalaway, there's some key things missing and the minor things, you know, why can't you adjust your button config on the character list screen like you can do in Tekken 7, where in tournaments, it's like, oh, we have to do this thing that we've been doing for the last five, six years. I assume that was long gone because Tekken 7 has it, but it seems like even though they're made from the same companies, Harada did say they kind of sometimes compete with each other. They're not got everything brought over and that, was from a tournament point of view that we felt but they seem that they've got a good balance of competitive um, aspects of the game uh, and the fast-paced nature they've taken all the parts from previous games and they've got the content as well which helps the competitive scene because Street Fighter 5 and Tekken 7's content are examples of you know how to do it well how not to do it and the casuals coming into the scene getting into it through casual content playing story and then saying well, actually I like this game it's pretty cool and then they come to the competitive side. So I feel that I'm just having so much fun. You know, forget competitive side of, you know, going to tournaments. It's just a really fun game. So you can go on it and find so much things to do, playing online against other people and going through the lore of Soul Calibur. It feels like they've really found their footing with the series and it's back on track. 
Yeah, I agree. I think, Skyly, you've you've been looking a bit more in depth into the game. I think looking at different little bits of mechanics. Um, yeah, how, uh, how, how's the sort of investigation into things that are broken in the game going? Because I feel like a lot of these guys, you guys, are probably the ones who go straight into the the learning parts. Mm. One thing I should say is that in the intro, you called me a long time Soul Calibur player, and I'm actually not. <laughs> this is like pretty much my first. Uh, I was one of the other guys who played two and three as a kid as well, yeah. and then kind of like fell out with the things that were underwhelming with four and five. Um, and it's actually a credit to the Soul Calibur community that I'm able, I, I've been able to make the videos that I've made so mm. far and, and will carry on doing it. Some of the guys, one of the reasons I was really invested in the NBA tournament, and, and I was saying, I know about these guys, these are some of the best guys, is that they've kind of taken me under their wing. I was interested in the game both from a, okay, well, you know, I cover tech and it makes sense for me to try and at least do a bit of Soul Calibur. Uh, and also just as as a player, I was very interested in the game because, I mean, you know, for obvious reasons. Um, so, yeah, the guys the guys at the top of that tournament, particularly um, Silent Joel and Andy Rue, they, they basically taught me the game before it came out. You know, they had uh, early access events and things like that. And so they pretty much taught me everything and helped me script videos and stuff anyway um so if we're talking about delving into the game and what we think is kind of like funny right now is uh well, the big one is that uh this is going to sound quite boring to some people but uh the frame <laughs> data seems to have been um it's very possible that they've essentially completely changed the rules on how the frame data works in the game uh so essentially what we're finding at the moment is that very possibly there are no odd frame data moves in the game um everything is even and so uh classically an aa would have been 13 frames a bb would have been 15 or 16 aas are 12 over 14 or 16 depending on whether you're a fast or a slow character it's kind of the the, the weird one right now because that Obviously, this is Namco. They don't give us frame data for Tekken or Soul Calibur. We're left to sort of figure this out for ourselves. If you one of those people that say that's a good thing, you're, yeah, you're talking out of your ass. Um, <laughs> those people are using RB Norway and stuff as soon as it comes out, you know, <laughs> and, they're, and they're just like, oh, yeah, but it's part of the charm, you know. <laughs> it's no, part of the no charm. way. Like work it all out ourselves. You do that, and I'm going to sit here and just like you know piss about <laughs> until it's ready. Um, but yeah, um, so that's kind of the confusing thing that we're trying to figure out right now. Uh, and then obviously all of the community are trying to find things like for that. There's a stage that has a wall that once it's like hit three times, it breaks, and then there's a yeah. ring out. And so what people have basically done their wall combo so that once it's been broken once they can break it twice and get a ring out all in one combo uh that's like the the thing that people are trying to figure out for every character right now yeah i've seen and, a lot uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's also the character customizations i believe you guys oh yeah <laughs> i've seen <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah just have to mention character customizations everyone just nods in agreements yep i've probably seen the video you're probably you're talking about <laughs> are we allowed to talk about the video on here <laughs> well the, the, the i'm obviously talking about the magic cup video i'm not sure you, which one oh, you guys, you guys are obviously the thinking <laughs> <laughs> the magic carp is insane the fact that they've done it so that it's, you know it's like when voldo's in his stance and it does splash <sighs> that's insane that's perfect i think they're gonna upload a video called massive laggy penis because that's what happened to me but, <laughs> but on but on that note i didn't even need to bring up because what people brought up i think there's been a couple of videos circulating right now within the community thanks to some notable streamers obviously uh there was a talk about full custom brand new characters in ranked so uh for those who aren't un are unsure what that means currently you can instead of just having sort of astroth uh, with a different outfit you can have a little sort of female tiny little character but with astroth's kit and in Soul Calibur, that changes things like range and the height of moves and other bits and bobs. And that's currently allowed in rank. So I wanted to grab your guys' opinion on why you think maybe that was allowed or and if you're for and against it. 
I mean, I'm not sure based on how this was done in the other games, because this, this is my first Soul Calibur as well, but it really seems like an oversight to me. Like, something that isn't um, too incredibly thought about. Um, the, the impression I've gotten of Soul Calibur talking to some other players of the game, especially on this topic, was that the, the online side of it was never really seen as too competitive back in the day because of how how the infrastructure for online gaming was back then. So all the competitiveness was done offline and online was kind of silly, casual, um, like a costume messing around fun. Um, so probably Namco just took that attitude going into the new game potentially. Um, and now they've they come into a generation where a lot of fighting game players are purely online players and that is their realm, that is their competitive zone. Um, so I, I think it was just something that was not particularly too thought about. I'm sure they knew about the changing hitboxes and the change in range. It's in the game when you create a character. It tells you range increased, decreased when you change the models. So they knew about it. Um, they probably didn't think it would have had such a the sort of impact that it did on mm. on the ranked community. Interesting. I think I wonder if they're thinking right. We've created all these assets for customization. Do we make them in ranked as well, or just put them in casual? But then some people, and you can imagine some articles, Soul Calibur items cannot be used in ranked before the game comes out. So I guess maybe they're thinking, well, do we make rank the really competitive area where it's like, was it Smash where they do it like no items, no nothing, final destination, just nothing, pure characters? Or do they think, all right, we'll add it in? And I guess if you use Tef Tekken 7, an example where they haven't done that for Tekken, as much as I hate items in rank with Dragon of his little blasted tank and uh, <laughs> distracting me like that. The last the sword. Last, last sword. <laughs> <laughs> as much as I hate that stuff, I, I would prefer if it wasn't in there. But I can see why others will like it. I can see why they're thinking, all right, let's keep it in because we're very within the scene and even if we're not thinking competitively, you know, we've got that mindset, but I can imagine someone else picking up the game and going to take their character online and ranked and saying, what, I can't use this in this mode and not liking the game. So I know I can see also what you said, Chris, where them just make being an oversight. I mean, with Soul Calibur 4, when they're having Yoda in the game, oh, it's a great idea, you know, guest character, you can't throw him. And that turned online, ranked, as you mentioned, as into a cesspool of rubbish. Online Xbox when I had 364 was just trash. You know, it was really bad for things like that. And it seems like, how could you not think that this was going to be an issue in a competitive rank mode? There's a character that's the size of your shin and half of the moves don't work on him. So, I know, it, I, it's kind of difficult. If it's up to me, take all that rubbish out of rank to make ranked purely ranked only, you know, because as you said, some people only have their competitive side online. They don't go offline. So, you know, I, I'm kind of torn of you know whether we cut out all the things we created for here or we just leave it how it is so but i do agree it's kind of ridiculous because if you, you practice combos and they fall out of combos due to hitboxes and range that whether you want to have the items and stuff allowed in ranked you can't have that stuff that's just breaking the rules of the game i think to note quickly i think you made a good point mm. uh, who's going <laughs> you can go go for it it's fine I, I think you made a good point with the, with the with the idea of there being the articles before the game comes out. Oh yeah, you've done you know they've done this and that and the other, but you can't you can't use it. And you know, it, obviously, a big part of the audience for any of these games is not us. You know, it's not us. It's people who go, oh well, this looks cool. You know, so you know, it's that kind of thing. I totally. Gonna ha I think that in a way it kind of makes sense from a business perspective for them to have it in at the start, yeah. wait for an outcry line. It's kind of like Lay, where it's like no one cares about Lay, you know, don't have him in the game. And then when everyone gets upset about it, we can go, well, look, we're the good guys, we gave you Lay. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's kind, of, it's kind of that thing where it's like they put it in because right now you know character creation soul caliber which we should say is absolutely like it's so good yeah the character creation the, the the amount you can literally make anything and people have been making you know everything um and it's all over twitter and everything and it is built you know i feel like it probably is building some interest from some people that wouldn't have been interested in the game um so i i kind of understand from a business perspective like i say having it in at the start and, and i kind of hope that they at least change some rules because as we've said you can change costumes and stuff in tekken and as much as we might like to get rid of it it's not 
game breaking um if they basically limited the sizes that you can pick if you want to take this character who's within these sizes into ranked you know if you want it to be eligible for ranked do it within these brackets if not you know go ham um i think that would be okay or maybe just a separate ranked mode that's you know advertised as being kind of like this is you know mode you know just do whatever um but the other point that you made that was absolutely true is that at the end of the day uh, the, the vast majority of the long-term fandom of the game are going to be basically online ranked players who is like, yeah, I really like this game. Traveling isn't really a thing that I am able to or want to do, but I enjoy the game. I enjoy being at a competitive kind of, you know, I feel competitive. I'm learning the game as well as I can. I'm trying to get to as high a rank as I can. You kind of have to treat ranked as if it's serious because soul caliber is in my opinion taken is being from the development side is being taken very seriously from a competitive uh, perspective and they will be wanting to push it in tournaments uh, they will be wanting it to do well in the, in the tournament scene and so i think in a way you know some people won't see it that way but you kind of have to take ranked seriously uh so i kind of hope that down the line one of the sort of two ways that I mentioned will probably be brought in. Uh, so I want to ask quickly, guys, uh, how would you guys compare the Tekken scene to the Soul Calibur scene? Uh, so what are the major similarities and differences between the two games um, and the communities as well, just as a whole? Uh, I don't know how well I can answer that question because I feel I've been part of the Soul Calibur community for about two days. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, I met I met most of them at Warriors Reborn. Um, I, my last Soul Calibur game was Soul Calibur 2 on the PlayStation 2. So apparently this is a great time for me to jump back in because it's most similar to that game. Um, but my, my first impressions of the Soul Calibur community are a bunch of really dedicated, really hard work and great people um, that love the game. And you can't really ask for much more from a community than that, to be honest, because you know they're always going to be given their, given their all when it comes to whatever happens with the game, whether that's events or um, future content. Like you, you know, you've got your your audience there. Um, so I, I think they're all really great people, and I, I can't wait to get more into the Soul Calibur community and Soul Calibur Six myself. Yeah, I, I agree with that that point, um, Icarus. Um, from how are they comparing the scenes? It's very, it's an interesting time period because you know with Tekken, even when the new game comes out, the scene is so established. As you said, Scalawag, there's a there's a dedicated amount of players that only play Soul Calibur, and they that's their game. So when there's no Soul Calibur, you don't hear from them, you, you don't see them at all because they, they don't have a game to play. And Soul Calibur suffered from for having you know, ridiculous ring out stuff. People can ring you out combos from the middle of the stage. It was just broken stuff. Five being the flop that we know it was. And then it kind of dying for a bit. Tekken, when a new game comes out, whether they're received highly or not, the scene is always there. So, and it's always growing. There's always like a lot of people going there and, a, you know, set amount of people. And Tekken has its established norms in community, in an atmosphere, in, in people and in, in how it is. Soul Calibur is at, an interesting point because a lot of that is very new and open so apart from the five good players there was a 60 sorry it was 40 people so in in warriors reborn all of that is basically open and it's got a crossroad where like dragon ball fighters brought together everyone from all over the all the scenes together so caliber is kind of like that because 3d players that play tekken that maybe thought well tekken's doing well I like that let me jump to soul caliber now players that who liked Soul Calibur from the casual aspect, but they mained other games. Now Soul Calibur's coming back to its kind of former glory. They're jumping in it. So it's kind of like that Dragon Ball fight is part where where a lot of the scenes are dedicated. Street Fighter scenes, Street Fighter players play Street Fighter and you don't see them at, not other events, but crossover as much. Tekken scene, play Tekken, they play that game. They don't play, you know, Virtua Fighter, Dead or Alive or whatever. But Soul Calibur, I'm seeing a lot of people cross over and people that play other games coming over and playing this uh put more timing to it so in terms of the the differences is like this is kind of open season what's going to happen with it no one kind of really knows where with the last tekken scenes and communities the big names are still there the veterans are there then you have a few other new people come up as well but i like the point where soul caliber is just you know 
it's, it's like a point of discovery where Soul Calibur was suffering from releasing at wrong times, not having great games. Now all of that seemed to be you know, set in place. Namco have got the formula which they know that works, and now it's kind of like I said, it's discovery. What's going to happen with Soul Calibur? You know, it's so new, it's so fresh. People from 2D games, 3D games jumping in. As yourself, you said, because you're jumping into it. People have played it for a while. Myself, I've played Soul Calibur for a long time, but by no means was I ever a competitive mindset, you know, at all. But Tekken 7 was the first game that I got competitive with to a decent level, and now I'm translating it into Soul Calibur. So... Playing, playing Soul Calibur 4 was game battles online, and online was totally different to what it is how it, was, it is now. So it's just a really lovely period, speaking to everyone, meeting all new people as well, and the content creators as well. If you search content for Soul Calibur, any previous games, it's not like Tekken. You don't find lots of guides, tutorials, apart from Eris, you don't find a lot. Someone asked me, where do I search for Soul Calibur content? Apart from Soul Calibur 6 stuff that's come out kind of now, it's not the same where you can go look at like Electro Wing Godfist tutorials from years back. That There's a lot of legacy. Soul Calibur, you search Soul Calibur 4 content and you're getting grainy footage that before there was even streaming because there was no, it didn't have that period. It's kind of, it's, it's so interesting. And I was on the sidelines trying to, you know, get into the scene at certain points, but uh, you know, the character is not in it, the game's out. So, I just love how the scene's developing. And as you said, um, Scalawag, friendly, welcoming into the scene. Um, players like Silent Joel, Andy Rule. Everyone just was nice to talk to as well. And I'm going to stop rambling now. But it's all good. <laughs> That's the main thing. It's good. I, it's I new. Think, um, it's fresh. Yeah. I think a, a big part is that not only has there not been a Soul Calibur game before this one for like eight years, and to some extent it was basically a flop because of lack of content, uh, the cast, etc. Uh, Tekken, even if that was the case, which it wasn't really, I mean, Tekken Tag wasn't their greatest success ever, but it had a competitive scene basically up until Tekken 7, right? Um, and in Tekken, it's so legacy skill heavy. Um, the, you know, you, a new game comes out, and you know i'm not talking down on the system changes and then you look through your character's move list if it's a legacy character if it's a new one it's different legacy character you go okay this move counter hits now this does this all of my punishments the same my combo basically has a screw move instead of a bound but it's the same you know it's it's kind of like um any point if you enter into the tekken community you are a moron next to someone who's been playing for 25 years uh you know and and it's not like a bad thing because they're there to help you right uh and you you find lots of helpful people in the tekken community and everything but where soul Calibur is so fresh and so new what i've been struck by joining the community is how you know just basically they love the game they love the franchise they want it to do well and they're passionate about kind of helping other people love the game and whether that's through you know teaching them how to play or you know, discussing this or that or the other. I think that the community has been amazing. And I, like I say, I, I put out my beginner's guide that I'm proud of, basically through the fact that other people told me what's going on. I couldn't have, I couldn't have done that without people's help. And that was like, you know, tot totally, totally uh, selfless, you know. Um, and so, just as a player and a content creator, they've been happy to basically go. Yeah, we want we want people making videos. We want people playing the game. We want people loving the game, um, and it's you know it's very positive and helpful. That's kind of like that would be my main takeaway from joining the community. Definitely, you've actually, you've actually led on perfectly to what I was going to just about to ask, which is <laughs> for all these new guys coming in and in people's opinion, what's the best approach to learning StarCraft? Uh, so not I got SC. <laughs> so for me, SC always means StarCraft. <laughs> now I have to use. Like I've got acronyms and it's all wrong because it's just I, I come from a MOBA background, so that's if I see I know SC. I know StarCraft recipe websites yeah. if you want that as well. Yeah, but... exactly. So if I see SC, <laughs> that's like my instant uh, sort of default to what the acronym means. So it's Calibur, obviously. But in terms of learning it, um, for coming from sort of a Tekken background, another game, what would be sort of the main approach you should take with this sort of 3D? Because some of the rules are the same. But some of the rules are also vastly different, especially with uh, certain attacks and certain moves. So I think it's probably best I'll throw that back over to you, Scanny. 
Um, I come from Tekken, right? So my my thing is, how do I cross over mm. my understanding of Tekken? Um, so that would be different for other people, but for me, um, you know, it, it, you, you essentially need to understand attacks are basically either horizontal or vertical. So it's like there are a lot of attacks that are going to catch you stepping, but also a lot, you know, basically half the move list in a sense is very linear. Movement is very free in Soul Calibur 6 and you want to just move a ton. I think move because the thing is, is that if you move and you and you get hit and you're not successful, you're learning anyway. But essentially you kind of want most characters, I would say their horizontal attacks, the ones that will catch you if you're moving, uh, you know, laterally are going to be less rewarding than verticals, which are going to be launchers for full combos and wall splats and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So you essentially kind of want to treat it as if I'm going to move and uh, have to make me stop moving. Just move a lot and you'll learn a lot that way because the reward for moving and then whiffing is boom, you're up in the sky, you know, whereas their reward for catching you with a move is that you get hit with a move. Um and also it kind of feels like mix-ups in terms of like low mids are to me this is my read on the game are kind of less important than in tekken because the defensive mechanics in the game guard impact and reversal edge hit all they they uh you know parry if you like all hit levels and throws so essentially it's more about timing in that sense because you're kind of like if I have a read on when you want to do something, I do have options to beat it, no matter what the hit level is. Um, and yeah, you know, past that, you kind of just, I think the best thing would be to learn generics because there are generic tools in the game and everyone has them. So everyone has their AA. It's usually like we were saying earlier, either 12 or 13 frames. We're not totally sure yet. AA, really fast horizontal, usually your fastest poke and punish. BB, that's a vertical, tiny bit slower, little bit more damage. Uh, 2A, which is like the uh, you'd compare that to a, a down jab in Tekken, mm. across very fast, interrupt pressure. Um, so learn your generics, and then um, and then yeah, obviously you go from there, learning uh, character specific tools. I think the training mode in this sense is actually really strong in this game. They teach you about all of your lethal hits and your. They give you sample combos and they, they the training mode does a pretty good job of basically going here are your character specific tools and in a lot of ways how to use them one thing for now one thing I've, i don't think it was being you covered is the movement uh, you mentioned briefly moving a lot but if you're coming especially if, if i'm talking from a personal level from tekken to soul Calibur, movement is a million times easier in tekken yeah. you have to sit there practicing for hours just to just to know how to move backwards correctly <laughs> or I, to I the side correctly still korean backdashing in soul Calibur, <laughs> and i'm just like wait what am i doing all i'm doing is i'm like moving back a little bit and sidestepping i gotta just hold back <laughs> it's a different game <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's what... in your hands to play soul Calibur. it's nice <laughs> Yeah, I've, that... I've had some painful wrists for days from just like trying to do Korean backdashing for hours. <sighs> Add into what you said, um, Scalawag, about learning the game. And what you said, Icarus, uh, the, the movement in the game, tech, Soul Calibur has its own Korean backdash, but I think the, I think we can all see the emphasis on movement in is a very different way to Tekken. So people would say to you, Tekken's based in the movement game as well, but Soul Calibur with its eight-way run, very different you can just hold back and you don't have to worry about the you know the technical skill of being able to do that i i'm rubbish at korean bat dash i'll admit that so you'll see me doing sidestep cancels i can't i can't do it when it comes to soul calabar i don't have to think about it as much i can just know i'm holding back to move back so you can really get learning the game you can really just simplify it at the start to just think right long range character short range because the weapon gives you an idea of how this character works where tekken it's limb based so you kind of have to spend that a bit longer to i guess to see what what this player is like but most times in soul Calibur, a long weapon they're going to be ranged small weapon short faster character going to be fast and then you know what entails with what kind of playstyle of that so once you found your character and you think Zasalamel, long scythe Okay, so I guess range is going to be in it. When I was, uh, you know, casual and mashing Soul Calibur 3 and 4, I was just playing the game. I didn't really know what I was doing on that level. Was it until I read something in Soul Calibur 4, which 
actually gave me a brief breakdown of how you play the character and it said about drawing them in. I thought, oh yeah, obviously, you know, you look at the weapon that you have and then think, how can I apply this, you know, within the game? And then just think about the spacing of, am I out of the range? Are they hitting me with verticals? Are they hitting me with horizontals? Because the the opposite one counteracts that straight away. So as you said, you sidestep, they hit me. All right, so next time I'll move forward and back. Or they, they keep sidestepping and I don't want them to move. So that's it. I'm going to hit them horizontal. Bam. So, and then, you know, kicks are a bit faster. So I think the, the casual side helps you learn it a bit more easier because of the, the, the fun modes as well. But also um, the technical side for Tekken isn't there in the same way you can get in there and just mash and have fun more so i think with soul Calibur because of the movement you know if you sidestep something most of the time it's going to be side steppable and you punish where tekken homing moves and moves that aren't homing have some tracking on left side and right side and out there that stuff is present in soul Calibur. you know there is anomalies where okay this move is supposed to be homing but you can step it but with soul Calibur, the first time i ever played six at versus fighting I step someone and I'm at their back within a second and I intended to do that. I didn't have to do a side walk or a side step and then think when they do it and then hold it. I just held up and round them and I punish. So just thinking about that, I think it's it, it's easier to get in and, and learn in that way. So that's how I would sort of learn the game. Maybe not thinking too difficult, getting about how do I lethal hit, lethal hit, punish this straight away. Just think about movement spacing and the weapon that you've chosen. Unless you have no weapon in your hands and you have range across the whole screen. That's, that's the exception. <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't see any weapon and then you're hit halfway across the screen. Oh, I hate that, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is, I think, the exception to the weapon size, I think. <sighs> but yeah, I, I think if I get around to covering him, people, will, people are going to like that video. <laughs> if I cover how to... Shut down some of that stuff. Yes, make one. How to <laughs> how to fight against as well. Yeah, please. Honestly, it's yeah, probably the worst. To come early. You haven't played story yet. You have to fight. I don't. Not. It's not really gonna be a spoiler because you do fight him at some point. I'm not gonna say what the story is, but you, he he's permanently hmm. soul charged. Oh, Do you mean that would be the case? Yeah. <laughs> he's permanently soul charged. He's soul charged. Wow. <laughs> Uh, it, it, it is not fun. Just, I'm just warning you now that it's, it's just not fun. I, I have seen GIFs going about of what I can only assume is the final boss in the story mode and what seems to be a one-hit kill that he has that just looks absolutely insane. Um, I won't go into too much more detail for people who are playing through the story mode, but I'm just, I just look at that and I'm just thinking, how on earth <laughs> does that become a move in a game? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess for me, learning this game, um it, it's kind of like what what dragon said i've just kind of been having fun with it as i go along um I, I didn't have too much time in the coming weeks up to release to kind of do some study and before it came out i played the beta for about an hour um when that was out because it was just a very busy weekend for me um but I, I did a bit of reading the one place i was always directed to for information was eight way run uh, which has always seemed to be the main forums and source of information for so caliber um, it, it seems like every fighting game is moving into discords more and more now. So the, the, the main bit of help I, I would give to new players is to go find your discords and go find your forums and just go talk to people about the game because you can get so much information just very quickly doing that sort of thing. Um, I, I also, when I pick up a new game, I try and go for what I see as the simpler characters. I don't know if I made the right choice here, but I went for Mitsurugi as he was sort of like the title character in the game. I thought it might have been one of the ones who was easy to pick up, had some of the, uh, like Scallywag said, there's generic tools for every character, but I felt it wouldn't be much more outside of that. Um, so uh, I've just been talking to people about the game while I play it, and I'm not really focusing too much on frames or um, specific matchups right now. I'm just going into ranked and enjoying the game. Um, mm. I'm, I'm certain there's times where I've just been gimmicked out by, by, by the same thing round after round, but I'm just like, it's, it's day two. Um, the resources are going to come out over time and you're going to learn mm. and it's, it's quite rare that you get kind of end up in a situation like this where a new fighting game's out and a lot of people playing the game don't really know what's going on and they're just doing whatever and it's sort of a crazy time in the um, the, the, the G to E ranks I guess um, so just enjoy it and if, if you really enjoy it you'll eventually start 
learning and digging deeper. Um, and that, that's, I think, the attitude to pick up any game is the best one for it. Yeah, I completely agree. And it, is a, it has been a lot of fun, I think. Everyone's got their own varying opinions on the future of it as well. So where do you think Soul Calibur can sit within the FGC with the new iteration? Um, is it going to attract potentially some more Tekken people across? Is it, Or is it going to peacefully coexist? So I'm interested to see where it sort of fits on that scale. Oh, it's time. That's one of those things, regardless, regardless of opinions, over time, it will sort of naturally find its place within the community where it, uh, it finds hopefully a stable, strong uh, base. That's, it seems like it's there. But anyway, mm. we've been talking a lot about Soul Calibur, even though we're on a Tekken uh, Twitch. So let's, let's move on to a little bit of Tekken. Um, so we had yesterday, Belong, uh, the Arena Clash, We've obviously, we have our very own commentator from <laughs> Belong sitting right here with us and a player as well. Um, in terms of what they've changed up from the last couple of tournaments, um, for, as a player and as a commentator for, between you guys, uh, have some of these changes improved, sort of the sort of format changes, rule changes, have it improved the overall quality that we've been seeing out of Belong? Did you want to go ahead, Icarus? Um, yeah, I, I can talk for a little bit about that. Um, to, to be honest, I didn't take part in the last season's Belong Arena Clash. I, I had a vested interest in it because a few of my a few of my boys were in it, like Jose Fidel, um, mm. and I I went down to the Belong Arena quite a few weeks just to watch him play. Um, Manchester did very well that season, uh, third place overall. So uh, this this is my first time coming into the coming into the Belong Arena Clash. Um, but I, I talked a lot with a lot of the guys on there. Um, heard heard a lot of feedback from a lot of different people. Um, and the, the main thing I can tell right now is that the guys at game, the guys at my belong arena, they're definitely taking all the feedback into consideration, um, and they're doing everything they can to make sure the um, organization between player facing player and just the week by week organization is um, always improving. So I've, it's been two weeks into the season now, and I've I've got no complaints about it so far. I've really enjoyed my first um, my first two sets with um, with Shen and with E minor and Solidus. Um, right, uh, Equinox joined us for um, this week's session. It was it was just a friendly, and uh, two of our players couldn't make it, and he did it very well in the champions team as well. So shouts to that guy. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm having a great time. Um, I'm sure. Eternal Dragon will have a, a, a very different perspective from the commentator side of thing, but I think all things are great going on uh, right now. I'm looking forward to the rest of it. Um, no, that, that's good to hear. I've, I've got similar similar views, you know, from maybe a, a, a different side, um, but you've hit the nail on the head where, you know, the, the staff and the people behind it are willing to learn or trying to improve. In the past, there's been that stigma of, you mentioned game, the company in FGC, people would scoff and go, huh, really? Because admittedly, in the past, game, you know, didn't really know what they were doing with fighting game. People would run some horrible tournaments with just bad rules, and it would just put people yeah. off. So I am not, not going to give anyone a free pass and say, you know, on just completely, you know, ignore everything like that. However, with the Belong Arena Clash, um, the people behind it are willing to learn and are trying to learn, and they take feedback on board so throughout the seasons there have been some changes where originally it was first to one and now with because of feedback usually you know fgc tournaments first first to two it was first to one before so now being first to two they've listened to feedback and they've made the change and it reflected um people's opinions where it was enjoyable because it was what they were used to while still being different with the 3v3 3v3 format um Throughout the, uh, the previous seasons, myself and the Bumble were always relaying information to the team. Be, be, being a big company, they, they can't always make changes straight away. So just because you might see something is bad, rest assured, there is certain people listening and they do try, but, you know, with superiors and being a big company, change isn't always going to be quick. So the, the people behind it, the production team, they enjoy Tekken and enjoy the FGC so much so that... They, they love it, even though they come from other backgrounds. 
Tekken is actually beating League of Legends and it beat Call of Duty and it beat um, Overwatch in terms of numbers and activity from from last season. Constantly, the numbers for Tekken are, are, are beating the other ones and the activity in the Twitch stream shows. So they have learned from it. The senior overall, I think, has benefited from it because we have uh, the Bradford team, which were the perfect template of what Belong and a grassroots esports competition can do. People that maybe didn't know there was FGC were into it on that way. There's a game in, in most cities. So they go to game and then there's a fighting game tournament. They get into it and maybe they take it further. Maybe they don't. But having the weekly shows, having the weekly streams, having people that care about this Tekken scene to take it further makes people come back for more. Because if you compare first belong to now, there was a lot of teams that didn't really have any Tekken players that were decent. Now, all the teams are very good. There's a lot less of complete blowouts where the, the skill level isn't there. But people that initially that were like, I'm not going to do it, have now signed up. And it's a learning experience for both of us. You know, there is going to be things that will need to change. There is going to be things that need to improve. Yeah, you know, there's, there's still stuff currently that I experienced from the commentator's perspective that, you know, isn't great. But it's the willingness to learn. There, there isn't that arrogant attitude with everyone that, nope, it's staying like that. That's how it stays. When there's something that comes up, they would ask us, so what do you think about this? You know, you, I don't know if you've seen other tournaments before where they would think um, RK Stick is an advantage and would ban it. Not just game. Other companies would look at that and go, oh, you brought an RK Stick? Oh, that's cheating. You can't be in it. And that would happen. You know, they, they didn't know what a mixed box was. They didn't know what a hit box was. But rather than just make a you know decision and go, no, you can't do that. The people in charge ask. I can't speak for all the Belong staff and, and the uh, arenas. They, they're all individuals, so I'm not going to say uh, just because my experience where I've gone to my local one and then the head office one isn't the same as other areas. But overall, it's something that is constantly improving. It's getting better. And you see now that Monday activity for Tekken for Belong is live. Mm -hmm. Previous seasons, it was, you know, nothing really going on. But when it's Monday... Monday, you see the post, you see the banner, you see the trash talk, and it sits nicely alongside of traditional FGC and the uh, 3v3 format, uh, 3v3 format with Arena Clash. So it's really good. I I, I enjoy it. Yeah, I completely agree. I, I, I'm not sure how much you've been watching, Scally, of of of, of these belongs because I'm I'm of the mind. I usually have to rush home to catch dragons casting at the end of the day after i'm like running home just so i can make it in time to catch him um i uh so. i haven't seen any of it so there isn't much that i can say uh. but uh obviously we've spoke a bit over the last couple of days and it's definitely something that i am going to check out it definitely interests me you know obviously Ooh. people who have been covering other parts of you know esports are you know bringing tekken in and having their take on it Did you say it was free on free it's four on four this yeah. time i oh. believe isn't it? It's four and four. The formats are three v three, but you can sub in between uh, round robins. Uh, that was in. a change as well from last time. The, the yeah. lot, you know, the the team thought about having uh, you know, but like football, you have a sub. So if you've got a set team and something's not working out right for the next round robin, we can switch up a player or someone can't make it. You've got a dedicated sub. So FGC tournaments. You know, double a limb, you go to a tournament, you pay your entry, you're knocked out, see you later. You're on your own. It's solo. The 3v3 t format, the, the team shirts, it's starting somewhere where in terms of grassroots, you know, this is where, you know, people start to get that taste of it. And then they say, oh, I like this. And their first tournament is then versus fighting, the biggest EU <laughs> tournament. And then they go to that tournament there. So, you know, it's... It's been great so far. Uh, question though, Scally, where do you live? Because you might have a belong arena in your area without revealing your location. It might be one in your area to go to. Uh, I live in Lincolnshire. Okay, Obama will know my UK geography is rubbish. So <laughs> I'm just going to have to say, yep, there's probably one nearby somewhere or there will be coming soon. But yeah, they're always building new ones. It's, you know, slowly, slowly yeah. you'll see them popping up and... You know, you're, and also, also it's a good p opportunity to find more people for the scene because sometimes creating a scene from scratch is, is difficult. I'm trying to do that in Luton. NBA have done a great job cultivating the Manchester scene. And, 
you know, it's, it's a really, really good scene. I've always watched it from afar in previous years and wanted to go. Belong helps out with that where you don't have the same kind of cost. There's a meeting place where you can go and it starts from there and it can develop into something bigger. So it, it's great. I do want to spice things up a little bit. Who, what teams do you guys think are going to be winning this one? Manchester Swarm. <laughs> Manchester Swarm easily. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you're a little bit biased on that one, but... Oh, no, 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 I'm just speaking realistically. <laughs> um, I'm going to say London Lionhearts are looking like the strongest team uh, this season. But, you know, we you never know. We could have a situation like we had with the Bradford team. Yeah. Amazing story when you just think about any FGC. You, could, you know, it was kind of like movie-esque. I don't know if some of you know that. <laughs> yeah. They... They were green ranks within Tekken and they went to the Belong Arena finals and were watching London lift the trophy and go, that's going to be us. So then a whole season decimated everyone and they're on the stage and it gets to like the final two games. So it wasn't like we're going to be on the stage and, you know, they just never come back. They actually stay dedicated, you know, capitalize on the, the, the team format and they're on the stage in the finals. So, you know, London, I think, are going to are gonna take it. They have a sick, disgusting team. Haroon, Gosain, uh, Rukang, Inti. That disgusting team. <laughs> <is how. laughs> it's, it's disgusting. But the Manchester team, you know, with yourself joining, Ryan, it, you know, they've got... I say they got buffed. Solidus, I played at the tournament. He knocked me out in Warriors Reborn. I'm I'm guided by... He's a strong player as well. Bradford team, getting strong. Each team that was there last time, I've improved. So the skill level was is, is you know, is improving overall. So I'm after going to say London as much as I don't want to say London. <laughs> Seriously, answering, it's, it's going to be so tough to call down because like Dragon said, Bradford, such a strong yeah. team now. I see them get better and better at every event. I uh, watch them go to, and just just mad respect to those guys for coming from the Belong Arena, and then actually decide to travel and go to so many different events within the UK as well, because that's just awesome. I see them at Sunday face-offs. Obviously, they came to Warriors Reborn, but um, but those guys are improving at such a rate. I find I just find it insane. So they've they've got just as much shot of any of the other teams. But seriously speaking, I think I got to agree with Dragon because London Lionhearts is just an insane team. That is. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't know how we're gonna take it over them. <laughs> we're gonna try though. Don't you? Don't you worry. <laughs> Honestly, I want to watch. I want to see it because uh, it, the reason I do ask that is because of last season's story uh, with the Bradford guys. It, it was absolutely insane <laughs> watching them the way they grew. And I had mentioned it, I think, on a previous pod- podcast that this exact same storyline um, about how they spent so much time working. And I think I can't remember who was on the podcast at the time. They were talking about the. I think it might have been Dante. Where they were talking about. So the practice regimes and how they constantly were feeding back and forth thing off each other, trying to get better and improve. But they have it, an amazing system. Yeah, uh, I, they, they told me a bit about, it and I was like, like I wish I could I could work that efficiently. Uh, take not just not just character matchups, but they would take apart player matchups as well, and they would watch and study and learn players' habits, and then go and recreate it in practice mode with with like just playing against each other and i'm just thinking wow these guys are on another level when it comes to training yeah and it's it's paid off and if they keep that up i honestly they're definitely gonna be there for contention again even with sort of uh, a lot of players that weren't in the last one playing like the london team a lot of them i believe weren't in the last the last season but they might have been in a season before that yeah, they've kind of they saw the hype of the Bradford uh, story, <laughs> and they probably thought, oh, you know, the, the London team before another disgusting team, Blue Majesty, Ru Kang, and the Phantom, they won it, yay, London won it, and they probably weren't gonna, they're probably gonna give it a miss just because they had their time, and then you have the story, the season of the Bradford story, and now everyone's like, I want some of that, so now <laughs> they've come back into it, you know, there were there was talks of the Stratford team gonna be, you know people some going over there but you saw the transfer videos where there were some triple agents you know lurking around there but they've, they've gone to the london lineup they're stuck loyal there so i think um you're right trim they were in their previous seasons but everyone you know casual in between you know the top players have seen 
how much attention that season brought on for Tekken, and they all just jumped back in. They all jumped back in, and the tryouts were, I think, probably the biggest tryouts we've seen. In my area in the Milwaukee Keynes, it traditionally has only had uh, three players around there, but now there's new players that have come down, and it's constantly growing. So I do have actually good. one last question to send over to you as well, Dragon, purely because I think it's specifically targeted at you. So obviously you've been casting some of this for a while. You've got an, a couple of new faces this time around that haven't been on the show. Uh, yes. So I want to gauge your opinion. How have they been behind the scenes? How have they been handling with the camera, the big production setup? How do you think they've been faring? Well, don't tell Shirtle this. I'm not sure if he's in the chat, but I don't yes. really think he's cut out for this sort of thing. Like, <laughs> I've, I don't think he's cut out of it. He's just... It's just not there yet, you know. I think that old oh, Shirdle. Nah, joking. So Shirdle, <laughs> he is. He's been very professional, and he's casted TNT. So he's not a stranger to commentating. He's also commentated. Um, I believe it was um, maybe a TWT event. I, I think might have been some strong style. I can't remember, but. He, his professionalism is shown straight off the bat. You know, it's come to production. Sometimes FGC, you haven't had any of the production side. You just jump on camera and you just start chatting rubbish and chatting shit. And then you can say anything you want mm -hmm. with, obviously, the professionalism of Long and it's a family show. Um, you have to have um, certain etiquette, with, you know, when you're on there. Ignore the fact that I saw and Abominable saw live on there as well. <laughs> Abominable said, I think Abominable said bollocks at the finals as well and, and teabagging or something. like. So everyone, they've been professional. And Dante has also has been great on the show. Everyone brings a, a different flavor to it. You know, Dante being from Birmingham as well, to hear an accent on the show is great. Also, Shirtle and Dante being very great players individually adds another dynamic where by no means i'm not on this level of skill but i can actually ask them specific questions and when players hear it from a top player they're gonna okay so you know that's what they're saying and they explain it in this way you know it might have some have some weight and they've really taken it on board where with fgc you can say down forward one you can say minus 14 you can say sabaki you can say you know, counter and, you know, if you crouch cancel this, get 15 frames, you get the ultimate. You can say all that that stuff, but with Belong and the casual side, you have to know when to dip in and out and you have to be able to say the hardcore, but explain it. Uh, Abominable will show you as well when it comes to, we used to go down the breakdown of the limbs, down forward one. You can understand what down forward is, but what is a one? So uh, the guys have been really great at uh, um, showing their experience and their expertise with the game at high level, but being able to talk and explain uh, the game and the mechanics on a intermediate to casual level holds a lot of weight, which some players and some of the top players don't actually think about. And they will kind of think, this play is not great because he's not talking about frames or in depth. And by no means am I a frame guy. But I, I could sit there all day and say, oh no, you know, that's minus whatever and, and talk about that. But you know is that always entertaining to just shout numbers at you all the time and turn it into maths and science for me it's not and for casuals getting into the game you know tekken's appeal um being a fine game you can see if one was about to die in the flashiness then you have a commentator that breaks things down and explain it definitely um helps out with with the long run people have directly said to me some of the long players who now come to fgc events have said i like the way you explain things and break it down I like the way that you 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 know you explain this concept. So um, the guys have been great, and you're going to see them on the show uh, next week Monday. Dante and Shirtle casting together. Um, so you know they're going to be great. They've they've picked up all all the production stuff behind and ran ran and did so. You know, look out for them. Look forward to it. I'll be looking forward to having a break and watching these guys from back home this time. So just. Just as we wrap up, any last words from you guys? Uh, I know Scally's pretty much. We've had a, pretty, a whole section here. <laughs> pretty much, kind of. I'm just excited to watch it now, and I'm not even being like a. You know, I'm not even being here. Like, oh well, I'm on the show with the guys, so I better. You know, like I'm. I'm really wanting to watch it. <laughs> um, last words from me. Uh, good. <laughs> I'm good. Uh, <laughs> cool. Perfect. I just thought if there's anything I might have missed out, you guys wanted to bring up. Uh, just before the end, it was great because it's been great having you guys on board, and yeah, it's actually been 
a really nice talk. I think we've kind of changed the tone a little. <laughs> Last week's one, I think, was a little bit serious, um, which I'm, I think, it warranted at the time. But yeah, this one I think has been pretty nice. So uh, yeah, just just a few last words from me. I yeah. just want to give a shout out to the rest of the NBA staff who helped out with Warriors Reborn. Um, I can't thank those guys enough. Uh, NBA Shield, Scott, uh, NBA Oslos, uh, Sean Symphony, everyone, like all the guys who helped out in the day, like Abdul, Crazy, Abby, Tin. Like, like the Manchester scene is just so awesome right now. Everyone's really motivated. Everyone's really hyped. And I think that event wasn't just a culmination of one person's effort. It was the culmination of a team's. Um, and everyone there pulled their weight. Breaking Max, like just so mu- so many people made that event um everything i want i thought it could be so just shout out to all those guys um thanks a ton and i can't wait to show you guys what nba has got coming up next oh i will um i can just quickly say me and dragon have already mentioned him but one last shout out to andy Roo. he's the guy who's helped me get into the community with soul caliber and helped me with the videos and stuff he came second in that manchester tournament he's an absolute monster great guy yeah, um, I want to say shout out to um, the Nijota guys back home. Dance is saying, Derpy Lama, um, Gorgoroth, or Deathborn as he's known now. Shout out to all the East London Fighters guys. And um, also, I have to say, well done to the NBA team again. Great tournament. Really loved it. You know, they really did work hard. And, yeah. you know, it's just really good stream as well. So, I was like the silent, silent Joel as well. He's been a, a key person for me who, just like yourself, Scallywaggers, you know, talk to you about the inner workings of the scene and they're all just friendly and just take you on board and just really you know share their knowledge and wealth and they're approachable so yeah just you know join the discord come hang out learn some soul caliber so on that note thank you guys for having uh for being on the show it's been honestly a pleasure having you guys here just talking and going through all these weekly discussions I've been obviously your host gems uh that's it for tonight's podcast on the character select Join us again, I think, in two weeks where we'll have our next lineup. Uh, and that's going to be it. Good night, guys. Thanks. See ya. Cheers.